Hello, uh, welcome everyone, and thank you for attending today. My name is Steve Cruen, and I am the National Sales Manager of Midland Technologies, uh, based in the Minneapolis-St. Paul metro area. We are pleased to present the series of webinars Midland has developed. These webinars are focused on the high-pressure die-casting industry. Uh, today's webinar is Venting and Die-Casting Using Bent and Valveless Vacuum Blocks. Midland, along with its sister companies, are all part of Innovance a 100% employee-owned organization. As owners, we are all dedicated to providing our customers with the highest level of quality products and customer service. I would like to introduce the following presenters for this webinar. Larry Winkler is president and owner of Wintech Inc. Diecasting Consulting. In 1996, Larry developed and implemented vacuum assistance and chill blocks in diecasting, and a year later, working with Midland Technologies, commercialized the product. Larry has over 35 years in the die casting industry at five die casting companies in a variety of engineering roles. We also have Bill Zabracki, our engineering manager here at Midland, where he designs and coordinates all engineering activities. He has 30 plus years in the manufacturing industry, ranging from electromechanical circuit board test units, hydrostatic high pressure valves and pump systems, and now high pressure die casting components with emphasis in designing managing operations and quality control. If anyone has any questions, please submit your questions via the chat feature. Thank you again, and I will now hand it over to Larry and Bill. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for attending our webinar today. Uh, we will be talking about venting and die casting using vents and valveless uh, vacuum blocks. Uh, this is Bill Sabracki, engineering manager here at uh, Midland. And Larry Winkler. And today's topic, we'll be dealing with uh, the fundamentals of die casting and the, the need to vent. So I think everybody understands why we need to vent, but we'll just kind of cover a, a, a brief discussion about it. Uh, we'll compare conventional venting with, with vent blocks. We'll also be looking at the valve lift vacuum block. And we'll look at uh, how the serrated block uh, works. The size of the block, installing block, and the rudder design, and also maintenance and, and troubleshooting. So again, we have a lot of things to cover today. And like Steve indicated, if you have any questions, you can submit them in the question box, the comment box, and we'll uh, we'll answer those questions at the uh, at the end of the presentation. So, porosity. Why is venting necessary? Larry, can you uh, kind of go over that? Uh, yeah, well, obviously, we all know if you're dealing with die casting and high pressure die casting, you know that porosity is present. There, there is no such thing as a uh, porosity free die casting. Uh, subsequently, um, we need to, uh, to remove that as much of that porosity as possible, either remove it or uh, certainly minimize the amount of porosity uh, in the casting. So air, of course, is the present in the shot sleeve. We've got plenty of volumes of air here in, in, uh, in a shot. The runners, the gates, the cavity, along with the gases formed. Uh, and the, those gases are formed uh, uh, when we uh, spray the dye. And then, uh, of course, that, that agent, if we don't remove uh, uh, some of it or all of it, and we, we know that some of it is, remains on the surface of the casting, of the uh, die cast insert, that it will, uh, when it comes in contact with the liquid metal, will uh, form carbon. And of course, that there, therefore uh, creates uh, porosity or gas in the casting. So uh, we want to remove as much of that as we possibly can. Uh, porosity is the main cause of rejections in die casting. I think everyone knows that. And of course, it's in different forms, but uh, we're just discussing here um, the gas porosity, not shrink porosity, which is a whole different subject. And reduce the porosity, air and gas must be evacuated during the injection phase. And so that's what we're addressing. So, so the uh, conventional venting versus then block. So what do we see here? Blair? Yeah, well, you know, we can always say we, we call it the push method. Uh, which is the use of a uh, of just uh, of just eventing means of uh, removing a gas 
and this illustration uh, indicates overflows and uh, conventional vents. You keep in mind that usually if those vents are any thicker than five to six thousand, they, you might be able to get by with a little more than that, but not much. That uh, accompanying the width of those vents and adding them all up is the total venting you have capable, that tool is capable of uh, performing during, uh, you know, injection of the metal. So they also, we also know, if my, I know you know if you've experienced and run die casting very long that these vents at that thickness will plug up and of course they're not reclaimable. Here's an illustration of a casting that was just um, not, not uh, the tool was obviously flashing uh, a great deal. Uh, possibly the die caster had backed off the lock on the uh, on the uh, machine in order to evacuate the air from the casting. And of course, those, those vents can uh, tend to plug. Um, usually, uh, in calculating vents, and we've done either uh, vents or vacuum for years doing the uh, performing it. A calculation. We uh, usually run into cases that, in many cases, we would use the entire perimeter of the casting to provide sufficient venting. That means that you would have to back off the lock on the machine uh, enough to allow it to breathe, quote unquote. And a lot of people would say, well, I need to die to breathe. Um, in doing that, however, of course, we run into the problem that we don't maintain metal pressure, and that's absolutely required in die casting. So excessive amounts of scraps, uh, we just lose those, they're unreclaimable. Um, you'll see bins of flash and of vents laying around that's so not reclaimable at the smelters, you might as well throw it away. Ooh, that's a lot of flash sometimes. That's a lot of flash, yeah. yeah. And then, of course, advantages of a block. Uh, we have with, with blocks, uh, a larger evacuation area, uh, and if you can vent, and if you uh, compare that to, and we can use the always exceed the amount of venting capable or required uh, when we uh, when we do the calculation for for venting it. And uh, the blocks can be uh, can be cooled. We'll get into an explanation of how they function. And of course, the metal can be reclaimed. The only metal that can't be reclaimed uh, with the uh, with the block is that last portion of the um, of the material as it uh, as it uh, solidifies in the block in the serrations themselves. So uh, the two types of block that uh, that uh, are available here at at Minma, uh, we have one. Uh, what we call the vent block, which is again the, the push style evacuation method. And that you can see down at the, the lower portion of the screen there. And then we also have the valve lift vacuum block. And this uses vacuum to assist in the uh, in the evacuation. And and there's an example of the uh, valve lift vacuum block as well. Now these blocks all of them can be used uh, for aluminum, zinc, and magnesium applications. Uh, they have a large evacuation area. There's various block sizes available. And uh, uh, here at Midler, our standard blocks are made out of a premium, premium H13 and and, uh, and hardened, of course. And you can also get uh, blocks made out of uh, beryllium pre copper, uh, either blocks or, or inserts, or pre hardened tool seal as well. And, and here at Midland, again, uh, custom sizes are available too. And with the next slide here, these are various custom uh, blocks that uh, um, uh, just a, a small example of, of blocks that are available. Uh, the upper left, you can see the uh, a copper insert into a larger uh, um, base uh, tool steel. And the upper right uh, is a, a thicker block. So if you have an application where you need a, uh, a thicker block compared to our, our standard thickness on the other block, uh, we certainly can do that. And then, of course, we can uh, we make blocks out of full copper. Uh, the, the entire block to be is full um, is copper, uh, and all the different types of sizes. And the one on the lower left is a is a smaller size. 
So chill block or vent block. This up, this comes up uh, from time to time when uh, with uh, uh, with our customers and and so the just to kind of go over it. The, the term chill is used to describe a metal object placed inside of a, a cavity to uh, to promote the solidification. And the uh, uh, Typically, a chill block is has a serrated or tooth pattern. So when people talk about a chill block, they, uh, um, that's usually what they're describing. And in some regions, we've noticed that the chill block is uh, is manufactured out of copper. But uh, but to summarize it all in all, the chill blocks and, and vent blocks are the are the same product. So valveless vacuum blocks. We'll look at that now. And a valveless vacuum block is connected to a vacuum pump system to evacuate the air and gas from the cavity. So you're using a second source to uh, to evacuate that that air. And with vacuum systems, uh, some things to uh, different types of vacuum systems available. There's the the portable or central system, uh, depending on your application and how many machines that you're uh, uh, that you're connecting to. Um, what do you think of that? Is it more popular to see uh, portable systems or central systems? Usually, uh, you know, in my my experience is in central systems or primary. Um, and there are different ways to configure them that you'll get into uh, shortly. Uh, but I, I would say, from an economic standpoint, probably a central would be would be the ideal because you can you can size a receiver uh, even though you may be running a smaller uh, Pump. It's right. possible. Yeah, it, it's possible you can do multiple machines, and so the uh, and typically the central is usually a larger system, um, and in most cases installations of the piping and so forth um, to the various machines can be done fairly inexpensively with either uh, uh, iron pipe or uh, PVC. I've seen people use both of those for sure. yeah. you know, plants. So. Um, you know, either one will do the job. Uh, the controlling system, which we'll explain a little later, too, it's not it's not the same as some of the uh, typical individual systems on valve style of uh, vacuum, uh, their, uh, right, and uh, burner, where you have to have an individual control and individual tanks and so forth. So, so here we see that. Uh, uh, Typical pump size is uh, the smallest one is about one horsepower. There's all there's actually uh, some smaller horsepower pumps, but typically for die casting is uh, one horsepower or or more. And again, as you get into a bigger system or a central system, you would have a, a higher horsepower pump. And as as Larry was saying, the receiver tank uh, uh, again typically it starts at around 60 gallons, and uh, and then as you uh, if you have a Central system, you're going to have a, a larger receiver tank or multiple receiver tanks too. Right, which is certainly uh, just fine. And uh, and then also with the uh, with a system, you want a uh, you want a filter filters to uh, hook up into your system. And and with using the valveless vacuum block, there is a solenoid valve that uh, that will uh, um, that is used to turn on the vacuum to, to um, that goes to the uh, to the die, and you would want to with a with a hookup kit too. If you have a central system, you'd want a hookup kit with each of the each of the die machines, so you have a, a separate solenoid activating uh, for each uh, for each machine. So why use a valveless vacuum block? Well, low porosity requirement. So the uh, uh, what have you experienced in the past with the? Well, that's usually what drives you to go ahead right. and, and make that decision to move from uh, from a uh, just conventional vent venting system to uh, vacuum assistance. Uh, just a quick note: when I became involved with uh, and got involved with uh, looking for an alternate alternative system to vacuum, the diecaster I was looking for at the time had five or six units had to run back in because of the uh, requirements and the uh, the customer requirements for porosity and uh, we were going broke 
Uh, we just had one man in our tool room that the only thing he did was rebuild valves. And the valves were very expensive. Uh, you needed a, um, a tank controls um, that controlled that, that vacuum system. The blocks, as I recall, were in the area of $25,000 a piece. Mm -hmm. So we were motivated, uh, and I was given the job to go find an alternate. And I will get into the history of vacuum blocks, but they've been around since, uh, oh, I would say in the 50s and 60s, and uh, they had been licensed. So. But that 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 makes a huge difference here with the uh, reducing and uh, and they're just certain castings that absolutely require yeah. vacuum. And I think uh, we also talked about how yeah porosity. You're always going to have porosity. You're going to have porosity. So uh, yeah, yeah. It's kind of hit the whole property quite a lot. You know, and just one thing I'll mention that a lot of people that were uh, or that have I've I've talked to over the years they say, well, it's a crutch. Well. You know, my answer to that is, is if you had a broken leg and you wanted to get around, you probably want to use a crutch, okay? <laughs> uh, it just makes sense to me if you can't get it conventionally. With conventional venting, obviously, you want to use something that, that you could get there with. Right, right. So, um, you know, and that's just a fact of life. That's just the way it is. Poor Phil is a, uh, another consideration, uh, for sure. And, of course, no one wants a bad looking casting. I mean, and customers over the years have just gotten more and more critical on their requirements of quality looking, uh, you know, both aesthetically and functionally better looking casting. Right. And then, of course, you get higher yields. If, if you looked at the difference between uh, uh, the yields that you can attain with uh, adequate uh, evacuation compared to inadequate, <clears throat> it's substantial. So, uh, of course, you don't have the last out. You remove and, and uh, obtain higher yields, for sure. Mm, good. <clears throat> and the biggie is no moving part. The, um, that's what you may need to pay attention to is keeping the block uh, clear. And you can do that in design and also function. Right. Okay, moving on. So, the valve with vacuum block. So, the, the vacuum system. So of course with valve lift vacuum block you need a uh, vacuum system and and there's basically a, a four steps to the uh, to a vacuum system. The pre injection, evacuation of the cavity, solidification, and ejection and recovery. And with the pre injection, uh, this is where the uh, the plunger is uh, is behind the porthole. Uh, the valve is closed, the solenoid valve for the vacuum line is closed, and, uh, and the pump is, uh, um, is on, uh, typically, it's depending on what, uh, you have a automatic system or manual system, but the pump is, uh, is, uh, gaining, uh, um, high vacuum at the, at the tank, so you're, you'll have, a uh, close to 29 inches of, of mercury at the, at the tank. And then as you go through the evacuation of the cavity. So here, the plunger is past the porthole. And once it passes the porthole, the valve can turn on in the vacuum system. And as you see here with the, with the picture that the, uh, uh, the blue arrows that are showing the vacuum being pulled out and going into, uh, being drawn into the tank. And it's being pulled through the, uh, through the cavity. And then once the plunger is, uh, is all the way up to its throat and the cavity is filled, the uh, solidification starts. And with using valveless vacuum block, you can actually keep that vacuum on um, right up to before you uh, open up the dive. So there, there isn't anything triggering the valve. It's, the metal's not trying to trigger the valve to close it. It's uh, the valve stays on as, as long as you need, and and it can again stay on all the way up till the till you open the dive. And then the final step here is that it shows that the uh, uh, that the die is open, the vacuum of course is closed, and uh, and the part is ejected. So the, uh, the one of the things that you do need to be concerned about or or make sure you have is, is the correct size pump and, and 
key retainer. So it's critical to have uh, the right size for a uh, for proper functioning uh, vacuum system. And too small of a pump, you, you won't be able to uh, achieve sufficient vacuum. And too small of a tank, you will not uh, provide, uh, it won't provide sufficient reservoir to evacuate the air. So um, the one thing about the tank is that you can have a, a, uh, a larger tank. There's no issue with having a larger tank. The problem is when you have a smaller tank. <laughs> so the same with the pump. If you have a larger pump, you're just going to be able to create that vacuum uh, a lot more efficient. Uh, you, you don't want to go undersized, but you don't have to be concerned uh, with having it uh, oversized. And, uh, and if you need uh, assistance with this, you can submit a uh, the Midland vacuum pump sizing form, and we can help you determine what's uh, the right size uh, system for your application. And that can be found on our website under the uh, uh, products uh, pull down menu in, in the vacuum systems uh, link. And next, we're going to look at uh, how a serrated block works. And uh, the blocks are designed with a serrated pattern providing metal flow resistance. And uh, uh, what is kind of referred to uh, sometimes as a tooth or wash, washboard pattern. And uh, this, the Animation here shows the air going through the uh, through the serrated teeth, and uh, as the uh, as the metal is being pushed through the uh, through the die. And typically, when the uh, when the metal solidifies, it will solidify about uh, a third of the way up the uh, vacuum block if everything is designed yeah. properly. <laughs> so, and uh, there's a uh, here at Midland we have a. Uh, a standard pattern is what we refer to as a, um, uh, kind of a flat pattern. It gives you the maximum resistance. And you can kind of maybe talk a little bit more about resistance. Sure. Stuff. Well, we all know that um, anytime you make a bend in a, <clears throat> in a pipe or uh, a, uh, uh, and you're flowing material through that pipe, it will create resistance. So each, each turn that you make, uh, creates resistance enough in this case to prevent the material from flowing completely through the block. Uh, if, and I'll say if because there's a qualifier to that, uh, the, the system itself, and that when I'm referring to the system, the vacuum system, I'm referring to the pattern that the, uh, the metal takes and you cut in the die. Uh, from the uh, cavity as you evacuate or exit the cavity to until you reach the main runner in uh, the vacuum block or bend block. And so that design is critical to, um, to number one, create resistance and not have material blow through the block, uh, thus plugging up the, uh, the vacuum system itself. Um, so, you can do the calculations if you're into <laughs> into flow uh, exactly what <clears throat> how much how much a, a resistance is created. But we uh, we've done this for many years, and we know that uh, this pattern, opposed to what we'll look at in a, in a minute here, yeah, the about B. Yeah. Okay, yeah, th these are two other patterns, and you you can get an idea. Obviously, with the triangle pattern, there's much less resistance in the uh, uh, in that that particular flow pattern, um, the variable is uh, more designed for a um, to try to achieve a uh, a greater area to the block itself. Uh, one thing that a lot of comments and this this occurred early on when um, we uh, started to uh, to get involved with this style of block that the comment was always made well. The the uh, valve style will afford you a much greater area, mm. and that's true straight away. Yes, you would say that there is a larger area available. However, uh, you can add blocks, um, serrated blocks, to the tool to achieve the same area as you would with a uh, a valve style. Mm. So you know that that argument really doesn't stand up. Uh, and it didn't stand, and, you know, and, and we've just um, seen um, success in evacuating cavities. And we'll get into some of the problems associated, but that's 
basis of the principle, and of course it cools off. They'll also mention cooling. Uh, there are um, uh, there are cooling lines available in in the block. Uh, I've never personally used them in all the years I've <laughs> right. been involved because um, you didn't need to. Didn't need to. Yeah. You yeah. need to. If if I always tell if you if you designed your runner properly from the cavity when you leave the cavity until the main runner in the block, you will you won't and should not have the problem. And that that goes not only with uh, material uh, solidifying, but also with uh, er erosion in the block itself. Yeah. Yeah. And these uh, different patterns. Now here at Midland, we we certainly can uh, 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 apply these patterns to our blocks as well, um, if if you uh, so desire. Uh, some folks I think uh, are are um, comfortable with a certain pattern, and that's what they've always yeah. used, and so they want that's to. That's great. Well, yep. Yeah. And we certainly can do that. So, determining the size of a block. <coughs> no, that's, uh, there's a number of parameters that are, that are included. Yeah, we have. <laughs> yeah, have no. Well, the, the yeah. number of cavities. So, <laughs> right, right. Um, the shot weight, so, uh, it's very important. Um, and you've seen various shot weights in the. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. right. Yes. So, you can understand that, you know, a smaller, smaller uh, shot is a. Uh, Going to require a different block compared to a larger one, right. is rather obvious. Uh, velocity is, a, is an important factor as well. And uh, cavity fill time. And the machine specifications. And, and I think we've, uh, now, well, here at, here at Midland, we do have a, a, a block sizing form. And, uh, and you, uh, if you need help with the size of your block, you can. Uh, uh, submit the form to us, and and we use a uh, uh, our own software that uh, has a uh, kind of uses a PQ squared uh, analysis. And uh, but uh, but one of the things that we've noticed over the years is that with the, especially with machine specifications is the accuracy of the uh, correct of the information. Right. You know that that's one that I'm sure you're all faced with is unless you have a, a monitoring system. Uh, on your machine to monitor your machine or control it, which is even better. Um, you're kind of flying in the dark if you don't have some way to monitor what the capabilities of that machine, uh, what their capabilities are. And of course, that also applies if we were looking at gating the same way. A lot of times, uh, without the proper numbers and capability of a machine, you're just kind of, you're left in the dark. I know this, that was the process. Worked as a process engineer for a number of years, and I know from my experience that was one of the biggest uh, issues was the accuracy of the numbers that you got off your machine to be able to do proper gating and and or evacuation, and uh, that's why we we see it in many instances the information that we're receiving and running PQ squared just to determine what the uh, horsepower capabilities of the machine are uh, that. There's, you know, there's something wrong in the numbers that we're receiving. Right. Uh, we do have a lot of information on die casting machines. Uh, there are basic, uh, as Bill mentioned, there's a number of uh, different attributes of the machine, and uh, and then what you're actually uh, capable of running and what that machine is capable of running. We look at all that when we do our analysis uh, because we want to make sure that we're, we we want this all to work for you. We don't want, you know, we don't want anything not to work. And if you're having trouble, that's what we really want to hear. Uh, if you are having problems, but so we use all these, all, all the particular um, attributes of both the casting itself and the machine, and then what the performance is that you're able to uh, acquire from your uh, your process and people on the floor. Yeah, and there's other. Other parameters here that uh, that, yeah. that are in the form too. So this this isn't just the uh, just these particular ones, but right. just, uh, kind of showing the uh, some of the examples of it. So the uh, so again with the vacuum with the block, either the vent block or the valve lift vacuum block. Uh, there are uh, at Midland here there are seven available stock sizes uh, blocks, and uh, the uh, the the chart here on uh, the table kind of shows the the different sizes. And the evacuation range from uh, 0.035 uh, squared inches to 140. 
uh, 0.140 uh, squared inches. And, uh, and then also block width of uh, 2.25 inches to, uh, to 8 inches wide. And these, uh, these blocks are typically available uh, uh, um, to ship the same day if, if they're, they are in stock. So if you need something, you can contact Midland. Uh, you can contact Steve and he can uh, set you up to see what, uh, see what we have available on, on, the, on the shelf. And uh, uh, if they're not available, we, uh, we typically are running a, a, uh, um, an operation to, uh, to put some on the shelf so we can get to uh, get you those blocks uh, uh, in a prompt time. And also, uh, as we talked about in, in the past, uh, earlier, the, uh, there are larger and, and custom sizes available. We, we do make quite a few different types of sizes. Whatever your application is, if you have a design already and you need somebody to, uh, to make that block for you, we certainly can do that. Or if you need uh, assistance in designing the block, uh, uh, we can uh, do that as well. And here you can see the two different styles. Uh, we call them the UVF for our uh, um, vent block and then the FC for our, uh, for our vacuum valve block. The rudder design. Uh, this is very important too in the uh, um, to uh, get a proper uh, evacuation of the of the gas and such. And uh, perhaps I want to talk a little more about that. Yeah, this is this is a uh, the picture here is rather small casting, as I recall. Uh, sure. This this particular uh, it's a mag, it was a mag mag part. And uh, we didn't have a lot of uh, leeway in the positioning. It also, I'm trying to remember on this particular one, we, we locate the outlet, and probably the most critical thing right off the bat is to locate your outlet at the last place to fill, obviously. Yes. And in this case, the, uh, the runners, as you see, from the part, and uh, they go off in pairs. We usually go two, four, six, eight, uh, if that's possible, uh, there are times when we have uh, odd numbers also, and uh, be either due to limitations of size, location, and so forth, and just requirements to fill. So, th you know, this is a uh, this is just kind of typical. If you'll notice too, the number of turns uh, from the time that you leave the the um, the casting itself until you reach the main. Runner, our standard uh, number is five turns prior to reaching the. Uh, this doesn't mean that it's necessarily adequate to do the job. This this is not this particular part had limitations on it, and as far as room in the tool, and that's the reason it it, it is not extending out, let's say, to the right of the the casting and going to the top. And the, and the 90 degree turns are critical. And the ejector pins. And the ejector pins. So you want to make sure you add ejector pins. Uh, you know, it's fine to, uh, I always say if, if the uh, metal never got beyond the cavity, you'd be happy because all you'd be dealing with was the air. But unfortunately, we got metal. <laughs> right. And you got to get the metal out. And one of the problems, if you don't properly design and have proper adequate, uh, Ejections, you'll have pieces of that runner stuck sticking and uh, will cause problems, obviously. Right. And I think the, uh, uh, with runners, uh, if you have multiple cavities, uh, uh, you may have a vent block or a vacuum valve block uh, for each cavity, or, or you might uh, right. combine exactly. those two cavities into one vacuum. Right. So right. You may have a six cavity tool or, and, uh, you know, a, a block for each two. Again, depending on the configuration and the uh, and the, um, the size of the part, size of the tool, that dictates it. One thing I'll add too is that uh, because the calculations are based on fill time and and um, and volume, a lot of instances we'll find and 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 also driven by alloy that you'll you could end up with a very large an eight you know an eight thousand block and uh, attached to a very small part. Because the cavity fill time is so low, mm. uh, magnesium is very, very uh, it's a rapid solidification uh, process, and you've got to fill the cavity quickly. So you can be 
down in the five to 10, 15 millisecond fill time. Um, and with the area you've got, that, that, I'm sorry, the volume of the casting and available there, you may have to go to a larger block. It's kind of the in, it's, it's kind of the inverse because right. larger castings may not require. Again, we're driven by volume and fill time. And right. uh, so that's the reason we like this is we, you know, we want these to work for you, that's all. That's right. <laughs> in fact, uh, we do have uh, um, uh, provisions to help you with the uh, assisting with your runner design. Uh, we offer uh, a suggested runner layout with the uh, purchase of, of one of our blocks. So if, uh, if that is something you need, we certainly can do that for you. For sure. Uh, the next uh, thing we're talking about is installing the block. And uh, um, Typically, we indicate that we want to install the block directly into the mold mold base when possible. And uh, and here we uh, we also indicate that uh, if you want to be a minimum of four point uh, five inches, well, I'm sorry, four and a half inches from the edge of the mold base. So as you can see over here, that's highlighted in the in the circle over here. And uh, um, and then also with the uh, you want to make sure that the inlet side are flush to the die cavity insert. Uh, very important. And with our blocks, you'll have approximately a, 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 an old 40 uh, uh, step between the stationary and injector half once the, uh, if the blocks are installed correctly. And it's, oh, go, go ahead. ahead. Well, go ahead. It's right here. Right? That's right. The party line should be flush. <laughs> Uh, or 0 0.001 to 0.002 inches prow to the die cap and insert. So uh, it's important to uh, reload these babies. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Make sure you're shut off. So whatever whatever your cavity seal is preloaded, and in other words, it's proud of the surface of the mold base, you you want the block to be the same. Otherwise, you I call it you're going to be sucking wind. Yeah, you're not, <laughs> not going to be getting adequate vacuum. Right. Yeah, and that's true with the with the uh, either vent block or the bellows. But that can yeah. happen. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Because then then you uh, have uncontrolled flash. <laughs> there we go. And the uh, cool lines and mounting screw options. So we do have uh, uh, two different options for screws. So the option one is just kind of our standard is uh, mounting the uh, the blocks from the sides. And uh, and we have plumbing screws there available. And on top is where is the coolant lines go through. But if needed, you can actually have uh, bolts to come through and and mount your uh, mount your blocks when you edge. So maintenance. So the uh, a standard Benson valveless vacuum blocks are designed to last. They're they're a very durable uh, product. Uh, but you do want to periodically check for Proper alignment between both halves. Um, I think if if, they, if you see some issue with with the die or you start seeing some flash and such, but uh, right, right. One thing we see, I just mentioned this, that if, if you noted in the last slide, there are keys built into the block. Mm. That's to assure proper alignment. It's critical that if you retrofit blocks, that your tool is aligned. Now you can either do that in several ways, but uh, we suggest that you may want to consider if you've got an older tool and you don't want to put pins and bushings, new pins and bushings in it, that you assign, so you um, install line, three alignment blocks, you don't need four, there's only everything sits on three points in the world, not on four. So you put one at the top and two on the sides to align the tool up so that you're maintaining the uh, proper gap uh, between the two blocks. It's critical. We've seen that in the past where people didn't pay attention to alignment and then would say, well, my vacuum's not functioning. Well, you're right. Your vacuum isn't functioning because you just pinched off or bent. Uh, you just pinched off the uh, flow <laughs> the flow of air through the uh, block. So just something to keep in mind. Right. And then the uh, uh, next thing here is that uh, you want to examine your blocks for any chips or nicks or anything, uh, you know, serrated patterns if there's a broken uh, a spot in the pattern. And uh, and it's best that you replace these blocks if, if any of these things are, are present. 
And then uh, you also want to uh, have a spray release agent to, and blow off with the with air for for each cycle. And that's a good way to keep your block uh, functioning. Right. We've had instances where customers would call it. Uh, or send us pictures showing blocks that were completely uh, coated with uh, uh, either release agent or uh, material uh, that is aluminum or zinc or bank uh, in the um, in the uh, durations of the block. And we, the first thing we'd ask is, it, are you cleaning them? Are you blowing them off? And uh, the answer was no. Either our spray won't won't reach it, or we we don't have um, I guess the uh, capability, or, or we don't have that programmed into into our um, sprayer. So it was a fairly quick solution to make sure that you spray them every right. cycle. Right. It just guarantees they'll be open. Right. And then when you're using valveless vacuum blocks, uh, you do want to monitor your vacuum level and, uh, and perform maintenance on the vacuum system and uh, clean the filters and such. Uh, and actually, next uh, our next webinar in August will be about vacuum systems. So we'll kind of cover that in more detail and, uh, and what you need to know. And and then after that in September, we'll follow up with uh, uh, our new back alert uh, monitoring system. So again, that that'll be another way of monitoring your vacuum level within your system. Yeah, within the tool. That's right. Yeah. This is yeah. this is something that I've been looking for very. <laughs> For years and uh, you know, sure. and uh, the capability to measure what exactly vacuum level you're pulling in the cavity is is the key to this. And particularly, the, the more critical the need for the vacuum, the more critical it is to know whether or not you're actually doing it. Pulling it. So again, you can check our website for more details. And then we'll go uh, finish up here with with troubleshooting. So. Uh, there's uh, defects uh, that are related to inadequate evacuation, and uh, such, uh, such as surface defects, gas porosity, blisters, et cetera. So uh, there's a couple causes. The, the first one we indicate here is the improper size calculation of the evacuation area. And again, the, we kind of covered this. It's, it's important to, to put in the right block into your, uh, into your dive. And, uh, and then also the the second cause there might be improper evacuation method selected. So, if uh, uh, again, if you're trying to uh, uh, create the low porosity uh, castings and, uh, and you're using conventional venting, that that may not be able to be sufficient. You might have to go with a, a valveless uh, vacuum block. And so, you need to look at those things. Uh, the design of the evacuation uh, uh, system. Um, so the so we, we talked about this too that uh, you know the last fill area of your uh, of your part is uh, uh, you need to know that and that's that's typically where you come off from from your exit runner right so, exactly that's where you pull pull your outlet from those locations uh, in the cavity uh, but the design of the runner is also important also uh, I just note that. A lot of cases we've seen, and now we're suggesting that you, you don't necessarily come off overflows, but actually uh, design a outlet gate, uh, because a lot of times people think uh, well, larger is always better. So they have tendencies to put very large overflows uh, and attach the outlet gates to those or attach uh, overflow to overflow that handle uh, the scrap. That is detrimental because what you can end up is, uh, if the fill is not proper and the design is not proper, you can actually push air back into the cavity Ooh. or metal. Right. I've seen both occur, so it's critical to to design it properly. And I think the uh, um, I think if you look, uh, notice that sometimes they do have. Uh, Runners coming off, and that they're they're blocking each other. Right, so right, the, exactly. They'll they'll actually shut off the the flow of the vacuum uh, prior to, and that's the reason why we suggest pairs, and then take a look at at the flow, a simulation, and of course that's the way you would determine last place to fill. Sure, is is with the simulation. So we'll continue on with this uh, misalignment of 
misalign the vacuum blocks or, or the vent blocks. And uh, um, and uh, and we talked about this already, but uh, uh, one of the things you could do is place a piece of uh, uh, lead solder on the serrated pattern and close the die. And then uh, and then when you open it, uh, measure the thickness. And uh, if the thickness of two opposite angles differ greatly, it indicates uh, some type of misalignment. And uh, and so that's something that uh, you can certainly do. Um, it also another cause could be a pinched, clogged, or a punctured vacuum hole. So if you are if you're using back valve suspension blocks and you have uh, uh, there could be some obstruction effect with your uh, with your hose line. And uh, and and also with that is, is plug filters. Uh, so you uh, uh, you do want to clean those filters, like anything uh, that you have, whether it's a, a vacuum at home or, or a vacuum system out in the industry. Uh, vacuums are going to need to be uh, cleaned. The filters are going to need to be cleaned to uh, properly uh, function. Oh, I'm sorry. And uh, there we go. And then the last thing with the inadequate evacuation is low or no vacuum. So again, you want to check your vacuum level and uh, and there's uh, uh, another way of, of doing that with uh, uh, checking the vacuum level at the shot sleeve um, with uh, the porthole, that is. Uh, and uh, uh, I think you'd be proud of checking yeah, the Yeah, I've done this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've done this over the years. Yeah, I just say, hey, you, you can, uh, I've gone down to uh, I don't know, Lowe's or somewhere and uh, picked up some, uh, some uh, large rubber. Uh, Pieces of, of uh, connectors, right, and then split those and drilled a hole in one end and took some clamps and put them, fit them, fitted them, sized them for the uh, shot sleeve, put them over the bore hole and put a gauge in it and turned turned the vacuum on to see if we were pulling vacuum. A uh, simpler way to do that is to, to take a uh, cloth or something to cover the bore hole. You should be, if you know, just with the cloth or, or the shop rag towel. Uh, over the poor hole, uh, you should see some movement of when you turn right. the vacuum on. Yeah. You should see. Uh, this is a little better, but that's you know that's another way. To do another it. way to do it. And cleaning the blocks and such, and uh, uh, again using the right uh, uh, spray agent too to make sure your blocks are clean. Exactly. And, um, prevent you from clogging plugging. So flash around bent blocks. So. Uh, Possible cause is the gap between the vent block and, and the cavity or runner insert. Um, and, uh, and this is where it's uh, critical to install your blocks uh, the proper way. Um, yeah, make sure they're proud. And, yeah. and also a cause is the die uh, is holding up. Um, and so you, 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 you want to look at your, uh, um, how the die is, uh, the press alignment and, and uh, you know, and ensure that the blocks are sprayed as well. But, um, uh, you know, so if, if you have, uh, you know, an older die or older machine, that uh, right, you may have to look at those. Uh, the alignment, what your yeah, load is on your tie bars, what, how square your machine is, you may have to go back to that, you know, go back to the basics, so to speak, and start to perform some maintenance and, uh, and uh, analyze what your machine's actually doing. I've seen this with tools. I've also seen tools that, uh, pillars maybe got installed wrong, maybe damaged, where the tool was not flat. So mm. you'd have to set those up on a, you know, on a mill and uh, and uh, determine whether or not how, how you know how flat you were, right. where the block is. And then the uh, excessive metal velocity, and this is kind of looking uh, related to the runner right. uh, layout. So so uh, yep. as we talked about, you want to follow some proper. Um, parameters for that. And uh, and then uh, another uh, troubleshooting, metal sticking to the block serrations or erosion. And uh, and the first co possible cause we talked about is excessive metal velocity. And and I think we've probably seen that more. I guess yeah. the, the main cause of all that is yeah. yeah. The velocity of the metal coming out, you have to keep in mind what I always do is I'll look at the velocity of the the, uh, the in gate velocity, what what metal velocity is at the gate. And uh, although we all know that as the metal travels through the cavity, just as soon as it enters the cavity, it's starting to cool off and solidify immediately. So, uh, but using that same number at the outlet becomes interesting. And we've had instances, I mentioned uh, 
not tying into overflows because we've had instances where the the uh, vacuum runners would actually wash out where they were attached to the overflow because of the excess of velocity that was uh, that was uh, that existed as the metal exited that cavity. It was just so I had just washed them out, and uh, I couldn't believe it when I saw it. Eight thirteen uh, blocks, but uh, an eight thirteen cavity just washed out and stuck. To, you know, they would stick after a time. And it was all related back to uh, those. And then you've got to resize and do some things. We found that this runner, or what we call the outlet gate design, is a way to alleviate some of that problem. Sure. Uh, the other possible cause is a uh, damaged block. Um, a metal solder, too, could be a uh, yeah. issue with uh, sticking. Um, and there you can use the yeah. cooling lines. And yep. So you can do that so, with the spray. And then, uh, and then the thin gap between the, uh, the front teeth. Um, perhaps you can uh, replace it with a variable feed pattern. That's one one thing that customers have done too. Um, but you know, all in all, with this, if, if if you follow the first one, if you have a proper runner layout and such, you know, these factors yep. uh, uh, typically uh, um, are not an issue. And uh, the last uh, troubleshooting slide that we have here is metal blowing through the vacuum or vent block. And again, that first one, excessive metal velocity. So, yeah. again, if you're <laughs> if that runner is coming, is allowing the the metal to zoom right through, and uh, yeah. so it's it's not the uh, it's a different velocity, it's the opposite velocity compared to a inlet yeah. runner. Correct. That's right. So, and uh, and so it's uh, you don't want to have a increase of velocity. You're right. You want to slow <laughs> down. So, no, and uh, and then of course damage block again something uh, to look for those uh, fits and nicks and, and such. So, uh, so with that we uh, we're at the end of the presentation here, but we are open up to uh, to any questions. And uh, <clears throat> perfect, yeah. So the first question that we have here is: Do you recommend any type of coating, uh, such as Futura Nano or any other type? Well, it uh, you know again with uh, typically if if you do have the proper uh, size block and runners and such, you you're designed properly, you uh, you really don't do it. As a rule, you should. Yeah. But that said, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you can coat it. Sure, <laughs> sure. If you want to send the money. Right. You know what type of coating have you uh, noticed in the past? Uh, you know what I've seen. Of course, uh, I've used Bosworth before. Uh, and uh, any PVD, I think, uh, coating. Right. A, a lot of people uh, use the surface coating. I like to use, in particular, in cavities. And these particular applications were with uh, some 390 aluminum, um, you know, which is a very high silicon abrasive material. Um, and uh, that, that tends to wash out. So uh, using a PVD on those uh, helps extend the life of the tool. It would right. do the same thing here. Solvonite wouldn't be a bad idea. Uh, just using solvonite and uh, some micro, you know, possibly micro and solvonite. Yeah, I think that's what uh, that some folks have used right. melanite. They use melanite. Melanite, and, melanite can uh, just wear away. It, it'll that. wear, yeah. yeah. Melanite and uh, different types of, uh, you know, oxide coatings. Right, right. In PVD, there's a lot of different types of and there's all, yeah. out there that's uh, right. available. And it seems as if, in my, my experience over the years in different die casters, that uh, one one just didn't fit all. <laughs> there, yeah, I, I, I right. could never find. And if you talk to diecasters, usually they'll have one that they kind of like, but it you know wasn't a cure for everything. Right. So it uh, a lot of it boils down to the total design and the total processing of the of the uh, part. But there's no doubt uh, materials are abrasive when they reach velocities that are necessary to make casting. So you're going to have some type of wear on the tool. Right, right. So I've got a couple of actually really easy questions that came mm -hmm. in from two different users, and they were asking about if this presentation will be available in the future. Uh, sure. So after the presentation, we actually do send out a follow-up link uh, that will have um, basically a link to go view the webinar after it's all said and done. So you can rewatch this presentation. Uh, you can share it with your coworkers. Um, you know, and uh, you know, after this, following this presentation too, I'll be going ahead and going down the list and, and trying to follow up with everyone who attended or didn't attend 
uh, making sure that they got all of the information that was uh, that was needed. So uh, a couple of users asking, yes, we'll have the presentation available uh, for the That's Right, and if they need assistance, they can contact Bill, and uh, we're happy to get on the phone and That's right. do whatever, you know, go to meeting and answer any questions. You know, we, don't, we want them to work. That's right. Yeah. All righty, next question that we have. Um, and, and we did cover this a little bit. Uh, you can maybe briefly retouch on it a little bit earlier in the presentation, but how can uh, uh, vacuum blocks or vacuum assisted uh, be better than other options such as conventional vacuum? Well, okay. So the so we talked about how the, the blocks are uh, provide a larger evacuation mm -hmm. area compared to your conventional mm -hmm. vacuum. Right. right. And um, and then with that, you uh, you know you can reclaim the metal as well. And uh, but I think you know I think you kind of hit it too when you got all of those conventional vents out there, and then uh, um, you're 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 getting uh, you're losing real estate. I mean, you got flies or something coming in. It's like boys and these types of well, and, to, uh, right. There's another another thing that comes into if you you've got let's say that you've got adequate venting, but the surface area, of course, then that's the projected area that you need to lock the tool up. You know, lock the machine up and hold the tool closed. Uh, can be somewhat excessive too. Uh, again, yeah. depending on the, the way you've vented, how many vents you need, and so forth, um, um, that can have a you know a detrimental effect on. Mm -hmm. uh, but the biggie, I think, is and we've had we've had diecasters that have done studies, one in particular that that ran studies on uh, scrap loss, metal loss a year. Uh, this particular diecaster, I don't remember the size of these machines. I think they were either four. 400 or 600 ton machine. He was losing about $25,000 a machine on lost material uh, by running conventional vents. Uh, what he did was he uh, collected all of his flies and put them in 55 gallon drums, weighed them up. Oh, <laughs> and, yeah, and, and, yeah. And, and you're going to plow, he said he was having to uh, dispose of the flies. It wasn't reclaimable. It wasn't usable. It was dirty, and usually had oil and, and uh, you know <laughs> right. dirt on them, and they would come off the floor. Um, so he had to pay to uh, dispose of those. So, uh, in, in his opinion, it was a, a quite a cost savings per machine. You know, um, just right. saving metal. Right, and I think the you know we we hit it too. If, if you need low porosity, if you have low porosity requirements, or the valve. Valveless vacuum block uh, is going to be, uh, uh, you know, going to help you quite a bit with that. And oh, you're yeah. going to be able to achieve that. So. The, the one other thing I think I didn't mention was the fact that uh, the difference in the results of calculating for venting for vacuum are different. Yeah. It will usually yeah. require, it, not usually, it always requires a larger vent block or conventional vent than when running vacuum. And that then makes it, you know, you you have that extra source that's that right. renting out the, that's helping you vent over the gas. Yeah. So. Yes. Anyway, you got another one, let's see. Yeah, we've got a, a question here. Uh, why uh, why have multiple exit gates per cavity? Uh, that's because the metal doesn't always collect at one point and is the last place to fill. There are multiple points almost every, every uh, there may right. be a few uh, simulations that I've looked at that, you know, that the cavity fills all simultaneously and even. Uh, so, and and we found that by going by twos, even though that uh, let's say it's a round casting, you're coming in, uh, depending on how many in gates you've got, a round casting, but your your outlet uh, on the um, uh, the opposite side of the gate, um, you know, it's pretty obvious. It's, there's there's a point at where the metal can converges. Um, I always put two in side by side uh just to make sure it never works yeah. <laughs> i'm always looking for plan b you know you got yeah. a you got b and you got c usually <laughs> and so um i would put two in just to make sure that you know that one of them's going to be open let's say to sure. balance the system out when right. i decide so, so good uh so uh ideally when should the vacuum be turned on and when should it be turned off and then how did well, it actually you know happen in actual scenario on yeah. So you know the uh, the the plunger going past the uh, four hole, um, you know that's critical. That uh, um, uh, and usually you know that 
and if, if, if you have, uh, you know, and maybe have some software or whatever, but you know the timing where that, uh, where that point yeah. is at. Yeah. You got to control the monitoring and maintain you, you know the position you turn it on. Right, right. Yeah. And then, uh, by the way, uh, don't don't turn it on prior to. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're going to inspect that. <laughs> yeah. 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 people do that. Yeah, not the best thing. So yeah. the, uh, um, you know, then so you, so you turn on that point, and then when you turn it off, uh, like we mentioned, you know, you can turn it off right, uh, right before you open up your dive. Yeah, doesn't uh, it's not going to uh, cause any issues or anything. Just the you know, vacuum will just be running, and um, yeah. uh. And then uh, you know we and we find that that's easily controlled by uh, by our customers and such. You know we have that people can turn them off, but uh, I, I guess typically they do turn them off perhaps a little bit earlier than before the right. dry opens. But uh, um, but they can usually set that uh, uh, you know set that signal to uh, to shut off the power going to the valve uh, easily. Um, you'll have a lot of uh, um, you know different. Um, um, I'm trying to remember the. <laughs> Sorry about that, but the, but your electronics coming out of your uh, out of your machine will uh, will help you. Uh, uh, you can, can control those easily enough to turn off that uh, that power going to. Uh, yeah, and uh, you can do it with a PLC. PLC, you know, with, PLC. Yeah. There you go. with limit switches. I mean, it's right. just a matter of position. Uh, yeah. You know, you you trigger when you cover the floor hole and turn it off before you open the die. That's right. That's right. So. Perfect. Alrighty. So it, it looks like we're getting kind of close on time here. I've got uh, one more question. Uh, and I know it was touched base uh, already in the presentation as well, but uh, you know, kind of, you know, how do you calculate the size of the best block required? Can I, I go right. down that again? Right. Yeah. So, so again, we have the form that uh, that uh, will ask uh, a lot of different parameters that you uh, uh, need to fill in there, and um, and so those are. Uh, uh, again, velocity, shot size. Uh, uh, you know, we have a gate size. Uh, um, you know, the machine specs, and uh, um, and then with that, we we plug it into our software, and we can uh, determine <coughs> excuse me, the right size, um, right. either vent block or vacuum valve with block uh, for your right. application. Right. So, it's really critical to well, we size these, and it's it's fairly it's a fairly simple process if you fill the sheet. Out and send a. Uh, uh, we prefer we like solid models, although we can do it off pieces of paper too. We've done that right. in right. a 2D drawing and come up with, uh, you know, what what you should do uh, as far as. Uh, and we take a look at it from the beginning. In other words, we, we're looking at it, you know, um, from what you tell us and provide us. If you don't have a design, uh, but you know what size machine you're going to go into. Um, just with those parameters, because um, we also are uh, capable of uh, designing gates. We can engage. We can uh, give you the parameters that we would recommend for the whole. I mean, right. literally, we could. Um, but to, to be able to size that uh, that block for you, if we have that sheet, we can pretty much know. Well, right. yeah. yeah, yeah, we're we're dead on. I'm I'm, I'm thinking. I can't think of any. Uh, instances where we ever uh, were inadequate. Um, no, and I, I think sometimes uh, I think we've had this come up before, where uh, folks would they say, "Well, why not just put the, the biggest block you can?" Yeah, and have a huge evacuation yeah. area, and that that can be troublesome too. Exactly right, Bill, because you don't maintain if you oversize, and you know if you do any gating calculations and, and processing, you know that if you oversize, then you can end up by losing metal pressure, and right. that's one of the attributes that impact pressure with metal impact pressure is critical to making uh, you know a good casting. Yeah. Okay, Steve, do we have anything else, or you know, we'll give uh, uh, one minute here just to see if there's anything else that's uh, come in here, and uh, um, I'm just gonna take a last look here. Um, you know what? Uh, at this time, that looks like it is the uh, the last question here for the uh, the morning. So we'll let everybody get back to the day, and uh, uh, we really appreciate the time here. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Thank, thank you, everyone. Yeah. And uh, uh, you know, look at our website for uh, for our next webinar. Um, vacuum systems and die casting will be in late August, and uh, again, you can see our 
uh, website for more details. You can also uh, follow us on uh, on LinkedIn too. And, and and definitely feel free to to reach out to us with any any other questions or, or concerns that you have moving down uh, down the road here. We're we're more than happy to. We're not traveling right now, unfortunately, but uh, we've we've been able to help out a lot of people still online over go to meetings and and, and still uh, work with you guys to to help you out with any solutions you might need. Yep. Excellent. Thank All you. Right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Have a good day.